Hello and welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn about CSS background properties. We will also learn about CSS fonts and margin property. So without wasting time, let's get started. Starting with the background properties, the first property we have already used it multiple times is the background color itself, right? Now we can use any color here in the form of this hash and then the red, green and blue values or we can use the RGBA format or the HSL format, right? The recommended is to use RGBA or just use this or just anyone you like, all right? Now this was the first type of background property that we have already used. Now the next background property that we are going to talk about is going to be a background image. How can we do that? For example, let's go to index.html and let's create a new div or we already have this div. Let's target this one, okay? Now for this div, let's give it a width of let's say 600 pixels and a height of let's say 500 pixels, something like this. Let's just remove this background color. Okay, so we have this div. Now I want to use something called as background image property. So I'll write background image. And in here, we are going to specify location or we will call it URL of the image. Now I already have an image. I'm just going to bring it into my folder. And this will be the image. Let me just bring it here. And we have this my image of trees or something. Now, to have this inside the URL, what we are going to do is I'm going to write my image inside the quotes. And see, once I let me just close the explorer and once I save this, as you can see, we have this image inside our div. So, this is one of the properties that we can use that is background image, and then we can insert an image here. Similarly, if we want this for our entire page, I'm just going to cut it and save it. And right now we will select the entire HTML document and here I'm going to insert the image. If I save it, the whole page is covered with this image. Now, as you can see this, there are some repetitions or some dots or, you know, some weird issues with these images, but these are nothing but CSS properties, which we are going to talk about shortly. So let me just put it back to where it was inside our div, something like this. So this property is called background image and is used to insert images into our HTML elements. After this, we also have many other background properties that we are going to use. But when we will start doing a project, then I'll show you many other background properties. So don't worry for now. We will use those properties to show how to implement them in real life situations, right? So let's move on to CSS fonts or typography. So talking about CSS fonts, let me just remove this image, right? I mean, it's not looking that good. It was just to show you what different properties are. We are going to implement them in projects later on. So let me just comment it out and it's gone. Okay. Now let's talk about the font families. Now there are different type of different types of font families in CSS. You know, these, these fonts that we are talking about, right? So if we go to simply Google and we search for a font families and hit enter, you will see that there is this website of w3.org. If we click on it, as you can see, it talks about how there are different types of fonts, namely serif, sans serif, monospace, cursive, and fantasy. All right. Now here you can see the font name that's Arial and it is it and the fallback is sans serif, right? So basically, this is the font family. This is how our browser looks and this is how it will look if we apply this font family. So basically, the main types here are serif. Now, first one, this serif, basically, they have a small stroke at the edge, if you would notice. So the serif one, let me just scroll down. As you can see, the serif fonts, they have this, this, this smaller stroke at the ends, as you may see for this T, for example. And the sans serif, you just observe this T for the serif you see it has strokes on the corners while as for the serif for the sans serif fonts they don't have strokes observe this t and this t you will get the difference so that is what it is the difference between serif and sans serif next we also have the mono space fonts they um, they they basically give you that mechanical or coding look you would call it or that typewriter look for your font right so these are the mono space of fonts then we have the cursive fonts that uh, that 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 basically try to imitate human writing itself all right and the last one is fantasy fonts you know different types of fonts with different curves and etc right fancy stuff so we we are going to use all of these fonts right we can actually easily use them 
we'll just go back here and we have the normal font here right now now if we want to get a font just simply go to google and just search for google fonts because that's the easiest way to get any type of fonts and here is the website fonts.google.com i'll just click on it and once we click on it as you can see there are many fonts that we can choose here so let me just select this roboto font this is a very famous font so i'll just click on it and as you can see it just gives us the demo of what it looks like and it has different you know basically font weights right and uh, bold we have thin we have light we have light italics we have regular we have medium italics we have bold different stuff right so how do we get this right if we click on get this font as you can see here is an option to get embed code we can also download it but the best part is to just use embed code now here here we have the link okay so i'm going to use this link or we can use the import so i'll just click on here to import and i'll just copy this inside our style so basically it is asking to put this stuff put this line into our css file that is the style file so just copy this at the rate import right click to copy and in our css here for the body i'll just target the whole body and i am going to write but before targeting the whole body at the top i'm going to paste this so, so i'll just paste this and save it and if you check nothing will happen so what do we need to do next we need to use the font family property so let's go back here and check as you can see we need to use this font family property so for example if i just go to my body and let's go back to the document and for the body i can write something like font family and what font family do i want that i already got from google uh, for google fonts that is this roboto so here i'm going to specify a roboto i'll write roboto something like this and in case the roboto doesn't exist we need to specify a fallback font if by any means the roboto font is not available or the google servers are not responding right so in that case just use any type of sans serif font because roboto is a type of sans serif font so i'll hit enter and once i save it as you can see our font changes to sans serif right and as i told you earlier sans serif have no strokes so they give you a minimal and modern look to your website all right so now our whole website will use this roboto font similarly there are thousands of font if you go here to fonts you have multiple fonts though that you can use for completely free in your website as you can see we have different types of fonts here you can check all of them we have poppins jersey mukta and uh, whatnot we have a lot of open sans we have jerseys different types of right we have roboto that we already used so we can use multiple fonts for for example now let's say i have this paragraph here right i want to use a different font for it for example we can do that too it's very simple let's just select that font for example let's just choose one font which font should we use okay let's say let's say i want to use this font for my paragraph i'll just click on it and then i'll just say get font and then get embed code and here i would want to copy i would select this import and then i'll copy this line after i copy this line i'll paste it here okay once i'll paste it and then i would want to just simply say font family right and the font family is this what is this called this is called sevillana so i'm going to use this one so this is a type of cursive font that we talked about earlier i'll just copy and i'm going to go into style.css and for my paragraph i'm targeting so all of my paragraphs the font should be sevillana now once i save this as you can see the font change after the font family we will talk about margins so let me just zoom out okay now what are margins basically as you can see we have different elements we have a h2 then we have this div with different elements inside what if i want to have some space between those elements what i'll do is i'll use a property called as margin all right so basically margins is used to create space around elements all right and these are outside any borders don't worry what i mean by outside any borders we'll discuss all of these what are what is the relationship between borders and margin in the next video where we'll talk about css box or basically a css box model 
So here for the H1, for example, I want to have some space between this element H1 and this div right here. So I'll simply say margin and then I'll write how much I want. For example, 20 pixels. When I save it, as you can see, we have a margin of 20 pixels. But you may say that we have this gap here from the above, from the right and from the bottom. Now this margin basically means that the margin will be from all four sides, from top, bottom, left and right. Okay, now to show it more clearly, let me just say 40 pixels. As you can see, we have a margin top of 40 pixels, bottom of 40 pixels, right 40 pixels and left 40 pixels. But to be more specific, I don't want a margin from top, right and left. I only want it from bottom. So I'll cut this property and instead of writing margin, I'll write margin and then I'll specify bottom with it. Something like this. And then I'll write 40 pixels. If I save it, as you can see, the margin is only from bottom. We can also increase it. Instead of 40 pixels, I will write 100 pixels. So if I save it, as you can see, now there is much more margin. Okay, so this is a bit about margin and we can have it for multiple elements. For example, right here between this div and this paragraph and this heading, we need some margin. So just above the paragraph, I can easily say, now I want margin on top of the paragraph. So I'll simply write something called as margin and then I'll say top and let's say 50 pixels. Once I save it, as you can see, there is a margin. To show it more clearly, let's say instead of 50, I'll write 100 pixels and I'll save it and we have much more margin. How about 400 pixels? As you can see, the margin is huge. So this is the margin property in CSS. So basically margins are like space around elements, right? Now we can increase or decrease this space to control how close or far apart elements are from each other or from the edges of our viewport or basically our browser itself. That will be enough for this video. In the next video, we will learn about CSS box model, box sizing and how to use Chrome developer tools. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and I will see you in the next video.